Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, August 4th, 2024. Did you miss us? Because we missed you. It's Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, and we're going to be discussing the last two episodes of Season 9 of All Stars, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes, perhaps the timing is a little tardy to the party, but you know what? It'll be worth it. Trust me. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And we're going to get into discussing the grand finale variety extravaganza parts one and two. Mm-hmm. Because, you know. The two-part finale. That was sort of anticlimactic. I'm just saying, you know, it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's why I feel the way I feel. Patrons probably heard, patrons heard this in the show. Like, I didn't have a snap. I did put one down in the last minute because I looked at my notes again. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we should uh, stop edging everybody and get into the first section. Yes. <laughs> Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. She still got bursitis, girl. All right. So <laughs> this first section is called Put the Pedal to the Metal. Uh, we're going to discuss the serve, swerves, and nerves. Three main areas that Damon and I kind of put things together. Serves, obviously, are the things that we feel are the positives that stood out to us. Uh, we want to give a, kind of a special shout out to the swerves. Could be um, positive in some people's view, but they're not in ours, baby. They are the things that you probably should have avoided as a hazard in the race. And lastly, nerve. This one is usually probably a good thing. Like, yes, mama, you've got nerve. But there are other times where it's like, you done wrong. Somebody did you wrong. Your gaze failed you. Something like that. Because, mama, you got nerve for trying to pull that off. Right, so right, that right. being said, jumping right in uh, on serve. I'm, I read what you wrote, David. I... I'm mm -hmm. failing to recognize what this is, so go ahead. <laughs> so if it's who I think it is, okay. so it was Justine Colby is who I wrote down. So Justin was one of the crew okay. makeovers. And Justin, if you if you watch Untouched, Justin is the, the one that always comes in to like shoo the um um guest, you know, judge away when they're talking with the queens and then mm -hmm. gives them their like, you know, five minutes, whatever, or 10 minutes or whatever. I'm assuming it's longer than that because they got to change. But, uh, um, uh, and he's been doing that for a while and he was living his life in this makeover, like quick drag, you know, mini challenge thing that they did, uh, which I thought was a really great idea. I thought it was a really cute idea. Um, I know they you know, made over crew members before, but it was usually like a, it was, you know, that's how we got winter green. But uh, this was fun. And Justine was giving it like, she has been around these queens for a minute and has picked up on their stuff and probably, you know, has always wanted to be <laughs> in a drag queen. And, I was living for the way that they were like, let's stir the pot, let's have some fun, let's make some questions. I mean, I wish he had, they had given her some eyelashes and eyebrow, but uh, <laughs> but I do I but it was quick drag. I get it. Um, but yeah, it was. I was really, really. I was loving it. I was loving it, and um, I just I was. It was a. I enjoyed that particular challenge and Justine was a part a main reason for that. Mm -hmm. Also Conrad, but that was for a different reason. Conrad was the um Roxy. The bald head, you know, little beard, um kind of beefy. Um yeah. <laughs> that was that was good. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, Justine was a bit of a surprise as to how uh, queeny they were. 
Mm-hmm. And I guess I feel a little mixed on it because a part of me was like, well, that was fun. And another part of me is like, that's obnoxious. <laughs> like, like very much giving baby drag first time out at the bar energy mm-hmm. for me. And I guess I'm just a little too old for that. So I was like, no, ma'am. You have, I not, just say- you have not earned your stripes. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I would just say I'm glad it was just for like this little bit of time. I mean, yes, they they had something later, but like the the it was just for like the quick drag change. This wasn't an all day right. affair. Well, okay. and I guess if not that the, we should do this, but if we were to compare Wintergreen and Justine, I would say that Wintergreen had a refinement about how they carried themselves, and Justine right. reminded me of like the girl who gets drunk at the bar <laughs> and then just becomes obnoxious and annoys the shit out of everybody. That's fair. Aren't I pretty? No girl, you're a mess. Go home. <laughs> 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 just saying. So Let me call you an Uber. Right. Get your ass home. <laughs> right. Right, 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 right. No, that's fair. That's very fair. Uh, what about you? Um, I said shining star talent. And um, so here's the thing. The variety show, I found it interesting that the variety show was like the end of the series. Or not the series, uh-huh. but at the end of this particular season. Like usually it kicks off a season. And then this season they were like, nope, we're saving it for dead last. Like it's going to be the last right. thing that you do to present yourself. And part of that's because nobody, there was no elimination. So everybody was around all season long. Uh-huh. And what I liked about it was everybody got to present their best self, quote unquote. They got to be a shining star in the thing that they are most proud of. I don't know if that was successful 100% for everybody. I think all of them did really well. I think some of them really did well. Mm-hmm. And those that didn't do quite as well, I'm hoping when they go back and watch the episode, they realize they could have done things differently. That's fair. And just pumped it up the extra 10, 15% needed. Yes. In my opinion. So, um, but no, I, I mean, I, I really, 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 really appreciated that. We've been watching these queens all season long. We've been watching them as, as contestants and performers. And then they got to do the thing that they really wanted to do, which was show off. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little surprised by some of the choices that were made, but the more I think about it, and we've had a few weeks now, I'm like, eh, I, that checks. Right. I, I think that's sometimes the way it is. Well, but the thing that I find most interesting is if you were to take this, if, the, if each queen was to take their thing on the road and make a whole tour – is there something there that people are interested to go see? Which is a hot take because Mm -hmm. during, you know, these, this finale two parter, we get a zoom session or Skype call, whatever with Jimbo. Who's apparently in Denmark on tour and Jimbo has an entire show and apparently it's really damn good. So that's what made me think of that was like, look at what Jimbo did. Jimbo was yeah. like, take the check, book a tour, make more money. Like, and has the ability to do that. Like has a whole cadre of things they want to present and is business savvy enough to know that you've got to give people what they want, which means you have to present some of the certain looks and some of the certain skits. So surely Temple's an absolute thing. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be stuff that you just have to do because people are clamoring for it. Right. Um, And that's where I go, hey, I don't know if all of these queens presented a full cadre of things that works for a tour. Yeah. But then again, maybe some of them really aren't trying to do an on do a, a solo tour maybe they're very much like ensemble players and they you know are okay with being a piece of something i don't know that's one possibility yeah, mm. yeah. so let's move on to swerves uh 
<laughs> okay, David. <laughs> I I feel like you mix two things up, but I'll hear you out. No, what, what is your no, swear no, no. for? Or maybe, maybe. We'll see. Okay. Anyway, so I give his words to the Pink Box for charity. And the reason is not what the, that it happened, not that it was a thing, not that, you know, it was a thing. Just that um, this should have been done earlier and possibly more often. Meaning, this was an opportunity for okay. the, 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 the queens to raise money for their charity. They could have done this a couple of times. You know, we've been filling a lot of episodes with shit. So maybe this could have been an opportunity for the queens, you know, a random mini challenge or something that they do during Untucked or, you know, something along those lines to where, again, money was being raised for the charity. Correct. Which is kind of the whole point. Because let's be honest. At that point in time, Miss Plastique receipt got money for the first time because of this box. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> had they not done this, then she would have had even less money at the very end of the whole right. season. Right, right. So, yeah. No, this yeah. this goes back to the whole like I think they should have been doing charity every single episode, like awarding dollars to the charities. So I I'll I'll take what you're giving as a swerve, and I say the way you make it better is you spread it across all the episodes. So uh -huh. you like make ten mini competition things that they have to do at the top of every day, and the theme is act a fool girl, uh -huh. like and everybody has to do the same thing, but each time of the 10 episodes everybody has to do the same thing but they have to do it in their own way and say it's 500 dollars. so right. then at the end of the season it's guaranteed every queen is giving five thousand dollars to their charity right. and so we're tuning in to see who's going to act like a wild animal who is going to twerk you know in a ridiculous pose who is you know xyz whatever that is um, and I think that would have been better served and we would have felt a little bit more invested in the charity aspect because we know they're they're trying to get money every single episode. Right. And then, I don't know, throw some stupid shit in and be like, you know, and then, it, I don't know, halfway through an episode five or six and be like, all the rest of the – all the queens get to vote to see who gets to double their, their you know, charity amount that they're going to win today or something. Right, right. There's lots of things they yeah. can do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah. stuff that's good with them. And I just, like I said, that was sort of the way I felt it was a unfortunate swerve for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Oh, okay, Gary. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I have to give a swerve for George's finale runway. Mm hmm. I, 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 I. I, I a lot of people were just like kind of fawning over it. And the moment she came out, I was like, what? Like, I don't think she looks good in black hair. I huh. think the hair was too big. Mm -hmm. I think the dress was too big. I think it was mm -hmm. all too much. She's, right. she's a tiny little thing. Right. And she was like, oh, I'm giving this Selena thing, blah, blah, blah. And well, I kind of get that. I was like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something really scandalous. If I was her family, I'd be mad. I'd be like, that's not really honoring her. Oh, I think so. I'm looking at the picture. Thanks, um, um, RuPaul's Drag Race um, fandom wiki page. So I'm looking at the picture that they have here. And I looked at it when I, I saw it when it came on Walk the Runway 2. And I agree with you. It feels it's swallowing her. Yeah. A bit. The, the bottom of the train is too heavy mm -hmm. with like a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and and it doesn't do justice to like everything else. I don't mind the dark hair on her. I don't think I just feel like this was too much hair. The hair is literally right. which is weird to say for a drag queen, but it it, it this is like hair, her dress. Like there's so much of 
the other parts that you don't see a lot of her. Right. And yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is like George's, I don't think her intention was to try to be a campy version. Right. Of this. So like to your point, you know, like usually you don't say that a drag queen has too much hair. I mean, look at what Maddie Morphosis did, you know. Right. So, but that was camp. That was the whole point. Like it was meant to be over the top ridiculous, like, and was a bit of a viral moment. Everybody talked about it, still talks about it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. where with George's, I was just like, girl, I don't know. Like I, edit a little bit less yeah. hair, a little bit more form fitting. Like it just, it did. It seemed to really be, like you said, swallowing her up. And I was like, wow, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Especially for the finale runway, you know what I mean, and like what you're what you're presenting. And so, yeah, considering whatever the idea, I get the intention, and don't get me wrong, I get the intention. Mm-hmm. I just felt like the execution was not so great, considering your height. Correct. Or her height, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's um, I just feel like it needed some refinement, and it makes mm-hmm. me wonder if like she got it, and there wasn't really any time mm-hmm. to leave to go to L.A. And it was like, well, we're gonna make it work, you know. Yeah, and and e- even though they knew in their heart of hearts, like there was some small things that needed to be done, and they might also have suffered from the whole like, well, this is the last look, like I've got to do it, like I got to go all out. Uh, Yes, but <laughs> just, you know, maybe some small edits. Anyways. So yeah, that was that was my swerve. I was like, mm, no, I don't I don't know about that. So with that, uh <laughs> oh boy. Moving on to nerves, David. What do you what do you claim a nerve on here? So we're gonna talk about the show. Hi. Spoiler, you hopefully have seen this already. Mm -hmm. So you know who won. You know how Mm -hmm. this show ended. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wrote down the fake out. And the fake out is for us, the show making us believe that Roxy was going to win. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I just, I'm being fully transparent about this show. I felt that they were giving it it's, this happens so often and so i should have seen it mm-hmm. but and don't get me wrong i am appreciative and happy for the winner correct that being said the show gave the impression that roxy was going to get her redemption arc and she and they were doing a lot of stuff to like prop her up and make this be a thing for her mm-hmm. she got a lot of moments mm-hmm. and then we get to the finale and they don't give it to her right it took a lot of nerve for the show to do that especially considering you know the fan base and the fandom and what's going on and I feel bad for the winner because I'm sure they've been getting some negative feedback from the fans and well, that's not fair that's not fair to her that's not fair to roxy that's correct because you know. i mean i've even seen clips uh that roxy addressed it like at mm-hmm. like performing it was like no 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 we do not do that here like mm-hmm. we give recognition and props to my sister who fairly won the show like you know and i was really proud of roxy that was like no if you are my if you were actually part of my real fans like you would not do this yeah um, exactly and i think that is like that edit issue mm-hmm. that they crafted it and i agree all season long it was built up that it was going to be roxy's win mm-hmm. and then she didn't get it no and, and i was absolutely gobsmacked but to be fair, I'm not sure who I would have given the win to if the very last lip sync was part of the deciding factor. Mm. Hmm. Just saying. Hmm. I thought it was I thought it was lackluster. On all three accounts. 
That's fair. I, I just wasn't really all that impressed. In fact, it was weird because I was like, wow, you girls really have run out of steam. Like, you you don't really have much to give in this moment, which is wild to me because it's the very last thing. Yeah. So, like, I, I mean, I guess my feeling on it is, like, did y'all, like, did they not have any more, like, Red Bulls for y'all? Like, what happened that it just... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I was thrown off. And... I know this might be controversial. I get that a lot of people appreciated that they got to perform solo. I yeah. did not like that. So, I, okay. Hi. Um, I agree with that 100%. I feel like... It lost... I, it, okay. It lost the, like, lip sync you know, for your whatever, whereas the two of you doing it, where you're kind of competing with the other person. Right. Um, it lost that magic. And then can you imagine watching that, listening to the same song three times by three different girls, then probably, you know, because of production and whatever, maybe having to start and stop potentially, or... Um, doing it twice well right and on top of it the rest of the cast is on the sideline sitting mm -hmm. watching all three of them and i imagine they from my understanding they were sequestered so like all three of them none of them were around each other to see the other ones or hear the other ones perform or anything mm -hmm. so that kind of sucks because then that means in theory angeria was up there had no idea like about the other two and then roxy was up there and had no idea about the other two and then vanji was up there and had no idea like so you can't there's no real competition mm -hmm. uh, in your lip sync because you have no idea what the other ones are doing or not right. doing which is why i think the performance was even more lackluster because i was like really you guys aren't pulling anything out like yeah it was weird. And I and so and I was super pissed because then it was all edited because mm -hmm. instead of giving us three still nonstop cameras of the different performers, they were constantly cutting back and forth and swapping. And you got to see three. You got to see one. You got to see two. You got to see a different two. You got to see all three. You got to see a different one. Like it was all over the place. And I was like, oh, well, your hands all over this for editing. Like you're letting us see what you want us to see. And I have no idea if anybody kind of fucked up or not, or maybe did something that could have gotten more attention, but you didn't want us to see it. Yeah. So that annoyed the shit out of me. So yeah, I. So yeah, when it when it was revealed who won, I was surprised. I also kind of got the impression, I haven't seen it confirmed anywhere, but to be fair, I'm not that invested because I haven't researched it. That they that they recorded all three winning, like mm. a traditional season, and then they right. really did not find out until. Like the yeah. reveal live. That Angie's. Angie's like response, like the video of them finding out who won, her response seems genuine that she just did not ex expect to win. So yeah. I don't know if like they, they taped all three of them and there was a feeling that it was going to go to Roxy or not. I just, I don't know. Right. It's possible. And that's kind of what I feel like I, I would, I don't know. Like, I obviously they did something because they didn't. They showed they we had a video of them watching. I didn't get the chance to watch it, but they had a video of the like the the final three watching the you know episode and getting the winner. So we got to see that. So it is a possibility that they did not know at the end who was actually winning. Right. But like I said. Like I said, fake out. I feel like if I had been on, on, I, I mean, granted, maybe we don't see what they see in a ways, but I would have been feeling that it was Roxy's season to lose. Right. Or win, I should. I mean, if, if they had been performing and watching all the episodes up to the moment of the reveal of the finale, I feel like 
it was kind of understood or obvious that they were giving Roxy a narrative. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Very true. Mm-hmm. Gary. Um, <clears throat> my nerve is mm. double diamond dud. Mm. All this, all this consternation, hand wringing, mathematics, like all this stuff about the badges and how the cast was going to choose amongst them who would get double the amount of diamonds, like double the amount of badges. Right. Okay. So did I discuss this with you? In the last episode, on air, or did I discuss it off air? I can't remember. We'll see. Well, we did talk about the double diamond a little bit. I know, but I can't remember if I told you how I knew they could have done it and screwed over production. Mm, yes, yeah. I don't remember if I said if I said this in, in the act, last episode when we recorded, but the thing was is that they could have all voted for one other person, like in order, so that it was a an eight way tie. So nobody wins. And then uh, production would have to figure out what the fuck to do next. That was That is what I would have wanted to do. Had I been a part of the cast, I would have tried to convince all the rest of the girls to do that. Just to be a dick. Um, but they obviously didn't do that. And so... I think Bussy had a really good video talking about all the math and like the different ways that it could benefit. Yeah. And in the end, the, the quote-unquote best decision was made that one of the two badge queens won Mm -hmm. because Nina went from two to four. Mm -hmm. Had she won the talent show, she would have been at five. Right? Yeah. And then she would have gone to ten. Mm -hmm. But I just have a feeling unless Nina did something totally unexpected production knew she wasn't going to win the talent show right tina or sorry nina did a really good job had a great you know number performance with a message of course yada yada Mm -hmm. but that was it yeah so yeah i i really feel like that was a big dud like it reminds me (laughs) go ahead no it i kind of i kind of agree it it you know obviously it became a bit of a uh um, another part of the fake out for me um the stakes were staking and and they played it out i mean i will admit i did appreciate the fact that like especially queens like vanjie they they did a lot of the we know that they're told to like put their hands over them you know the lipsticks and like touch them and like you know contemplate and all that stuff because they need to like you know make the you know build the tension and as whatever and i i really was happy with Benji in in that it was very clear that she is doing this because they are telling her to do this because look the way her mannerisms were going i was like oh she 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 don't care like she's just doing this because they told her to right right uh, she already knew probably who she was going to vote for um which i think is fair again I did appreciate Bussy and their way of kind of breaking it down and adding all, putting all the numbers and crunching everything. And it made sense that the way to make it work would be to either vote for someone that was already in the top, like Roxy, or vote for someone that was already in the bottom. So someone who only had two badges because doubling and even if, unless they win, that's the only thing that would have made a difference. Um, but in the at the end of the day, it didn't make a difference. Whoever the person who got the double diamond, Nina, did not get enough badges to put them in the finale when they doubled our numbers. Right. I I think we've had too many seasons of this. It's chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am. I am. I'm. I I grow weary of the stunt whatever thing like the ruby right. snippers was kind of fun although right. it turned into a like tit for tat thing and that yeah was kind of boring 
Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's like we've had the Golden Plunger, the Ruby, like, you know, Snippers, the Chocolate Bar. I mean, we've had all these things that they've tried to do. And I'm just like, uh, it's not really, it's not working. It's not doing anything. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. You ready to move on to our next segment? Let's do it. Okay. All right, so now we're moving on to snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses or the highs and the lows of these particular episodes, um, our high points and low points. So, Damon, uh, you had said earlier that you didn't really have any snaps, but you came up with something. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I am giving snaps to Plastic Talent. Okay. And this is, yes, the talent show in particular, but also throughout the season. Um, okay. I feel very good about her talent show. I thought it was a really great number of the way it worked. It added a lot of elements that she had been portraying throughout the season. So the, you know, obviously, um, the glamour, the comedy, you know, it just all sort of worked for me. Um, I thought it was one of, if not the best, um, number in my humble opinion. Okay. While I love Vanjie, um, I don't think a um, leotard, you know, song talking about your your body suits and jumping around with the dancers was enough to be like, mm. oh yay, look at you. There was elements added to Plastic's number that I think really worked in a way. So that's why she gets my stats. Hmm. Okay. You go, girl. I hear you out, and I will agree that for the season, she definitely delivered on the visuals Mm -hmm. and did well in the challenges. Yeah. Not in the lip syncs. No. Um, (laughs) No. No. No, that part. That's the thing. I realize that was shady, but I can't let it go. It's like, girl, you have to know the words. It's called lip syncing, lip syncing. But I'd like to keep it on, please. Oh, yeah, we're gonna always say that for every fucking time. Yeah, no, I, I just, um, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I think it just yeah. was something. Bless her heart. <laughs> well, my my bigger concern is I don't think she did herself any favors. And no, by that I mean, like if you're if you're going to be out there and someone's going to find out that you're like you're performing. If if you're not already a Plastic Tiara fan, will you be interested in seeing her, or will your recall be this season where you're like, well, a girl don't ever really lip sync. She don't know the words. Like she just knows how to like throw her body around and look sexy. Mm-hmm. And that's not what I'm there for. I mean, other people might no. be, but I'm like, I actually want to be entertained. Just saying. Mm. So, yeah. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Girl. Learn your words. Just, anyway. Oh. <sighs> What about you? Um, so I want to give snaps for one of the messiest segments that has ever happened in the entire like pantheon of American RuPaul's Drag Race. And that, would, to me, was the crew untucked interview with T.S. Madison. <laughs> I thought the interview was fun. I thought TS interviewing was great. I also thought that it was super shady to make TS do that in the way that they did it because I feel like they they asked TS to do it or they or they put it on them to do it. And the thing is these girls did not look that good. 
Because <laughs> it was quick drag. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if TS fully understood that in the very beginning and just did a really good job rolling with it by asking their questions. It also got super awkward, like kind of as a joke where she was trying to guess who their mother was, their drag mother that made them up. Right. <laughs> And a part of me was like, oh, you left that in, did you? <laughs> like, you could have edited that part out, but... Yeah, she could have, but she didn't. But I will... I, I do want to give snaps for that, because it was nice to see the crew have a moment to be interviewed and talk about what it feels like to be done over. To have been working behind the scenes and then be on the other side of things. And to be done up and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know... um. I do feel like one crew member specifically did it because they were asked, not because they wanted to. <laughs> and it showed. But if you didn't have that hyper-masculine fish-out-of-water element, then you might not have that like uh, other version of this to look upon right. as a comparison. So, right. yeah, there's that. You have your Justines and you have your, what was, I think you're talking about the Conrad ones, maybe. No, there was somebody that was also very like, mm. I don't remember the names. I'm talking about the one that works with tools. Oh. Oh, God. That had the, the glitter beard. Oh, that, that was probably, that was, that was Conrad. Okay. That was the one that was done by, um, um, Roxy, um. What did I write now? That, that wore the white Andrew. socks. Yes, yes, yes. That was that was Conrad. Girl. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. That Girl. was the thing. <laughs> yeah, I just okay, um, yeah, and I and so I want to give the snaps to TS for doing such a good job with what they were given, mm -hmm. even though I felt it was a disservice that they did that to <laughs> to TS. Um. It was just a nice new segment. We never had that before. Yeah. Um, we don't get a chance to really interview, talk with the ones that are getting made over beyond like the episode. Like they ask the questions sometimes, but it's usually like, you know, how was the experience for you and what did you learn? And right. I feel like there could have been more. There's all could always be more. Well, there's also a conspiracy theory that this was all crafted in a certain way to be shown because of a possible alleged lawsuit that's going to take place. So oh. do you know about that? Oh. No, I don't. Honey. I think Bussy's talked about it. Willem has definitely oh. talked about it. Willem, Willem got escorted out of DragCon because of this. Oh, because apparently there is going like, I don't know. Is allegedly there is a lawsuit being brought forward that crew members are suing world of wonder because of how they were treated by the talent. Oh, Yes. And that apparently three specific queens from All Stars 9 were named as non problematic queens, mm. which is wild because that means the f other five were, I guess. I don't know. But I Ooh. guess because Willem talked openly about this, Willem's perspective is the reason they got escorted out of DragCon is because they spilled the tea about that and put World of Wonder in a bad light. And Willem's perspective is I did no such thing. I talked about what I had been told. It is rumor. Um, the fact that you don't like it, that's your business. And it kind of adds fuel to the conspiracy that this is true. Because mm -hmm. Willem doesn't shut up. <laughs> so like if you had <laughs> if you had not escorted Willem out with like such a huge security de detail and guards and police and shit like this wouldn't be such a big damn deal right so um yeah so the, the, there's a theory that, that that all really got aired because it was to show how much the crew really liked the experience to maybe try to change ah the narrative i i think i know which i think it's a i haven't seen that bussy queen um video yet mm -hmm. i think i know which one you're talking about because i've seen there, cause there are a couple out there and i'm catching up on their videos so yeah no it's um it's so it's it's very intriguing um but <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm just i'm just thinking Again, if this was all for fodder, like, 
where they fed lines. Anyway, I I don't know. I mean, it it is interesting because I really feel like this is a heavy hand of production stepping in and making this go a certain direction because they've never done that before with any of the makeover challenges. They've never had a judge or a guest judge come in and talk to the makeover like people and ask them specific questions Usually they talk amongst themselves about the experience and what they liked and what they didn't like and what they liked about their queen and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of standard formulaic, but so there's that. So yeah, for sure. But that being said, I did, I did like the fact that they did it and, you know, props to, props to TS, give her flowers. Mm -hmm. She deserves that. You know, she's, she's, she's very real. Right. And like has grace and gratitude and so that was that was appreciated to see that yeah all right so let's move on to eye rolls <laughs> okay did you did you want to type er onto the end of that last word or just <laughs> <laughs> no no okay just the fluff um i get it this was the last two episodes there wasn't a whole lot going on because clearly the 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 talent show was the thing like right. that was it and again i don't know if this was recorded in a day maybe it was recorded in two it looks like it looks like it was recorded in two mm-hmm. but um as they're getting ready for on the second day or whatever for the talent show um, they start talking about like the season and what happened and yada yada. And again, it feels very just like forced and fluffy because they need to pad the time to get the episode to its length because they can't obviously show everything in the talent show or the, the talent numbers are usually only what 90 seconds maybe. So right. it just became very obvious that this was being padded for the sake of getting the episode filled. I kind of wonder if going into recording, they didn't know what they were doing. And by that, I mean, like we ended up with 12 episodes. I wonder if they were thinking they were only going to have like 10 or 11 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, Oh no, 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 no. Like we've got enough sponsors. We've got enough like money being thrown at us. We can make a 12th episode happen. We just have to figure out how to like, stretch it out or whatever yeah and i agree with you like it just like these last two episodes lost the oomph the energy Mm -hmm. of the finale yeah so and i think it's mostly because it was the same thing i'm trying to remember if i remember last season all stars eight i the queen all of the queens came back and they did like a talent show kind of thing because I remember like Jimbo and, and, and Candy doing their own sort of like number after the fact. And I think the winner of the talent show was going to get like $50,000 or something like that, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly. Um, obviously, you can't do that when no queens are getting eliminated. So here we are with the talent show that has no, well, it has stakes in a sense, but there wasn't anything that. <sighs> made it fulfilling right so no i i hear you out mm. yeah Ooh. <laughs> i just read i i read it earlier but i'm like i'm seeing it again now mm-hmm. go ahead gary um what I'm, eye rolls for? well i'm giving eye rolls to the charity losers and I say it that way because I feel like the charities were the losers in this season. Uh-huh. Like, they they were not prominently focused on or talked about. I discussed this before. I thought it would have been a great idea if every single episode you focused on a charity. And each of the queens got to introduce and talk about their charity. Maybe show, them, may f- show footage of them interacting with the charity. You know, like, uh-huh. Vanjie actually at the ASPCA. Nina at the Trevor, you know, uh, project. And yeah. just like... Um, just like those things I think would have gone very, very far to legitimize the concept of that. It's for charity. Right. I also, uh, Roxy in the 
is it Patrick Starr video? I think I sent that to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Says that she's been asked a few times, I think, to come to All Stars and she declined. And this time she said she decided to do it because it was for charity. Right. Which I find very interesting because that kind of adds up to the theory or the idea that Willem had proposed a long time ago that All Stars is becoming harder and harder for World of Wonder to book and to get ready because the queens are like, I don't need it. Sorry. Yeah. And the only queens that are kind of interested are the more recent ones or the ones who were first outs. And because they won't do a quote unquote first out only All Stars or a all runner ups all stars mm-hmm. like they won't theme it or couch it that way and they're trying to like kind of higgledy piggledy pick them from all over the place it's just not kind of working right. and you know what's intriguing is that some of these queens came straight out of vegas mm. which i thought was also interesting to me because i'm like hmm how did that work like for the girls to be away from their from their gigs in vegas well as someone who has seen the RuPaul Drag Race live show, they tend to put in um, the queens that are in the area. Like the last one, was it this one? I know the one I saw, we had Kahana and Coco Montrese, who are already Vegas staples. Um, and Derek Berry, who was, has been on the RuPaul Drag Race live show right. since the beginning. Well, it, right. Uh, and I, I, So, I mean... Uh... Coco's the swing for, I think, all the roles or something I heard crazy. like Yeah, something like that, yeah. So I know that that's a possibility, and I think that's good for the girls that they're much more flexible so they can have some time to get away. Yeah. But, I mean, if we if we did 12 episodes and each episode is three to four days, that's a good chunk of time to be gone, mm. you know, to be able to record for the season. Because right. at four days times 12 episodes, that's 48 days. So that's a month and a half. Yeah. So I don't know. But I feel like the charity. Yeah, I just think that the charities themselves were kind of the losers, even though in the end. They gave away $399,500. Mm-hmm. So if you take out the 200000 that the winner gives away, that's still almost 200000 to the charities. Right. That said, if the rumors are true, allegedly each queen got paid 85000 to do the season. Wow. So if you take all of that into account, that means they spent over a million dollars between paying the queens and the money for charity. Just right. saying. So this goes back to the whole, like, there's money. There's money to be made. There's money to be had. There's money to, like, pass around. So makes you wonder. Why don't they? Why don't they? Yeah, I mean, that's where I feel like the whole charity focus if they're going to go that route again in the future, I think they need to shake it up. I think they need to spread it out over the season. I think they just they just need to be better about it. Yeah. And and make that make that the priority, make that the conversation piece then cuz what you don't have control of on the narrative is what the public thinks of the show. Hence all the people talking about how like they kept talking about the queens and like that focus as opposed to like what the charities were getting or what they were doing and how they were going to benefit. Right. Because anytime they didn't talk about a charity and then some things happened, it kind of made it seem like they didn't give a shit about the charity. Charity was afterthought. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. So we've reached the end of the season uh, we do definitely want to congratulate the winner, uh, Miss Angeria Paris Van Michaels, um, honey, honey, this gown uh-huh. that's on screen, the gown that she wears for the, fi- for the final runway, she turned the corner and I was like, holy shit. I was mm-hmm. like, 
where the fuck do you get something like that made? Like it was, mm-hmm. it was so spot on regal for the finale, like just blowing everybody away kind of thing. Um, right. So yes, congratulations, Angie. Um, congratulations. So happy for you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was well-deserved and, you know, as someone said recently, perhaps if you go back and watch the entire season from the beginning, knowing that Angie's going to win, you might see something very different out of the season. That's a fair point. Hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's done. It's over. I was entertained. I will say this a good friend of mine recently talked to me about this they came in to watching rupaul's drag race for the all winners all stars and i had to laugh because they said that they really liked that season and they they liked it because what did they call it they called it i'm not gonna get this right i think they called it something like rupaul's british bake-off version or something like that (laughs) and i guess the idea is that like it's kind and people are nice and it's not mean. And so, like, because it's a non-elimination kind of thing, they really like that. Because it, it allows all the girls to be showcased. And so mm-hmm. this is another version of that season. Um, and I get that. But there's a part of me that's like, not everyone can be that good. And I don't want to watch some queens for an entire season. <laughs> so no. it's usually why the, like... You know, the starter seasons, whatever you want to call them, like there's some in the batch intentionally that, you know, they're just not going to make it. Right. So. For that, I will say the season was entertaining and I, some some people did have a glow up. I will. I will own that. Yes. Yeah. I think for me, an all stars is a season for non elimination. If you're going to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Regular season. No, just no. Right. Um. Uh, at all stars where they're all kind of already sort of established, et cetera, et cetera. It makes sense for no queen to get eliminated until, you know, not the end, but, you know, not get eliminated until the wins are announced kind of thing. Yeah. Agreed. No, I hear you on that. So, um, I guess my understanding is that they did put out a casting call for season 17. I haven't heard really much anything else, not even rumors or whatever. So my guess is we've got not quite a half a year off. (laughs) (laughs) Until the next (laughs) regular season comes around. And a part of me is like, that's good. Because I do kind of need a break. Because no offense, I get real tired of this back-to-back season stuff. Same. I'm like, I would really Dang. like y'all to take a couple months off. In fact, for All Stars, you could take a year off, two years, three years. You could actually make it like the Olympics, and they only happen every four. Yep. yep. Just say it. I, you know what would be amazing, World of Wonder, is if you gave the queens like a few years, and then you had some season in between an All Stars, to where you potentially have a larger pool of more recent queens that want to redeem themselves after being on their recent seasons as opposed to potentially pulling teeth and nail to get queens to get on your show. I hear you on that. I also feel like they should put a rule in place that no queens can be on all stars until they've gone, been gone for a minimum of three years. Mm. That's possible. Because I feel like if you did really, really well, you don't need to go back to all stars. For that. And then you need time. You need time to marinate. You need time to cook. You need time to steep, hone your skills, be better, then come yep. back. Just saying. Yeah. So, but if you have ideas or thoughts on our thoughts, there's plenty of ways that you can let us know. You can go to cubsoutloud.com, leave a comment on a post that we have on there. You can also send us an email, cubsoutloud at gmail.com. You can uh, call us and leave a voicemail message. Call 361 well talk. That's 361-265-8255. Pretty much on the social medias, type in Cubs Out Loud to find the podcast in general. If you want to join uh, the social chat that we have put together, you go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. If you want to see when we're going to be having the regular show event, uh, when we're recording live, 
to YouTube, you can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Or if you want to support us, there's a, a number of ways you can do that. And one of our favorite ways is when you buy merch. So you go to zazzle.com slash clubs out loud and you get fun stuff with logos and sayings on them. Now, I will admit, for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, we haven't put anything on there recently, but you never know. Something might be coming along that you're not expecting. As Damon's, like, has the magic vanishing coffee mug in front of him that he's, like, showing off. <laughs> it has the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo on it. Um, you could also be twinsies with us. You can get a Consent is My Foreplay t-shirt with this Drag Pride color logo with the crown and the chevron type stripe deal um you can get that along with other things and we just recently um put a whole bunch of new shirt designs that are on there um we have the whatever the blank says these days series that we launched we also have some new ones from smashy so we've got some stuff on there and uh patrons you should be on the lookout because we sent a message and we're going to be sending uh your rewards to you and i'm super excited about some things that we're doing so and uh in fact i just ordered a new reward that nobody knows anything about today i'm so excited um that's gonna come out oh. to folks so that's that's one thing you can do is you can go to zazzle speaking of patreon you can go to patreon.com slash cubs out loud for a dollar or more a month you can be supportive of us you can help keep the lights on as we like to say um we use it for obviously the rewards but we also use it for like equipment upgrades and things like recently uh, a while ago we had a dual interview uh episode so we had to get some wireless mics uh for that that benefited us so i know damon uh, and Trayla appreciated that so they weren't like having to try to patch in with headsets and be on top of each other you know um, or if you want to make a donation and just give us a tip you can do that you can go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud and you can just make a one-time financial donation we would greatly appreciate it if you want to find us as a podcast you can pretty much go anywhere on any platform that podcasts are available comes out loud drag race is its own audio feed that way um it's also its own playlist on youtube if you're interested in that damon if people want to get in touch with you how would they do so if you wish to get in touch with me you can find me at theater cub 79 that's t-h-e-a-t-r-e c-u-b 79 on most very related sites on our facebook or you can find me as pup underscore umber on twitter or pup umber 79 on blue sky those are not safe for work for the safer work stuff, you want to go to DMA Gamer Seven Nine on TikTok and Twitter. Gary, if you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabear Seven Three. Um, I do have a Twitter account that I put all anything drag related to. It's Gabear Seven Three Drag, so I don't get spoiled on things, especially when it comes to the drag race. Um, and it also uh kind of keeps the other stuff that I want to see in one concise place. Yeah. Didn't get spoiled on the the winner like i did within five seconds of turning on fucking twitter um friday morning i'm not bitter about that she's just a stringent she's not bitter <laughs> <laughs> so with that lovelies we will be back sometime in the future i imagine to uh recap another season but until then uh have a good one y'all bye <laughs>